from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Pharmacist On Call. Good evening, Nashville, Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, those of you as far west as Jackson, those of you as far east as McMinnville. Welcome to Pharmacist On Call with your host, Dr. Sean Pruitt, and if you're watching this show, I am your community pharmacist. Well, everyone, welcome to our June edition. Uh, should be a pretty interesting show uh, with all that we have going on. This is your one hour forum where you get to call in with those burning health questions that you've wanted to ask, but quite frankly, your doctors and your pharmacists are busy. That's why for one hour every month, I have the time for you. So call in with your questions and your comments. The producer is going to flash the number on the screen. Uh, so make sure you give us a call with any health questions or health concerns that you may have. Uh, as we do, we'll start out with our, uh, our shout outs. Uh, I want to wish a happy birthday to my youngest brother, Aaron, uh, who turned, uh, gee, should have turned 45 yesterday, uh, June the 3rd. I guess yesterday was the third, so a happy birthday, Aaron. Also want to wish all of you fathers out there happy Father's Day. We've got that coming up, so we, uh, we can't leave Dad out with all that he does and uh, giving life and all of that. Uh, I did want to extend condolences uh, to uh, a couple of friends that we lost here. Uh, Mr. Calvin Childress, uh, husband of our other friend, uh, Connie McGuire. Uh, so we want to send our condolences out to his family and certainly uh, Miss Connie as well. And also to the family of Regina Short, uh, who passed away uh, back in April, uh, I guess in between shows. Uh, so we want to say uh, goodbye and, uh, and, and pray for their families as well. Also want to uh, do some condolences for the people who have been murdered recently uh, by police officers, George Floyd, uh, Breonna Taylor, and the young man's name in Louisville uh, escapes me as well. And certainly Ahmaud Arbery, Arbery uh, who was gunned down as well. Uh, so we want to extend our condolences to them. Uh, announcements, we've got uh, a drawing tomorrow. So uh, if you come in, you spend over $20, you, uh, we do a drawing for a free product every Friday. Uh, I think we uh, give away a hemp oil, a beetroot juice, uh, probably a hemp blunt. Uh, we also sell cosmetics now for those of you uh, who want lipstick, concealer, foundation. Hey, we pretty much got it all. So uh, you can choose between uh, one of those products. Okay, and let's see. I guess uh, before you all call in, we'll talk a little bit about um, a global pandemic that is sweeping the nation. Uh, well, actually sweeping the world and it's just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, this has to be the deadliest, most infectious disease that I, I've ever seen. Uh, and this, this pandemic, this disease is called racism. And this thing has been going on for quite a while. And it's something that we need to eradicate because it's destroying not only the planet, but this republic. And so we wanna have a frank discussion about racism, at least for this first segment, and then we'll get into some health stuff. So if you have a, a, a point that you wanna make or a question that you wanna ask me from an African-American perspective, that you are certainly free to do that. Uh, I believe in open discussion. That's the only way that problems can be solved. Uh, so let's have a dialogue and we'll just consider this a therapy session. Just like you asked me about diabetes and hypertension and all these other things, you can ask me about uh, this, this mental illness that seems to be affecting uh, many in our country. And so many people will, you know, uh, well, how, how would I know that I'm suffering from racism? Let's talk about what racism is first. First of all, it is two things. It is a health condition. It is a, a psychiatric condition. And the other thing is it is a system created by this mental disease. So it is a system that has preferences for people who are white. It has obstacles for persons who are other. So that's African American, Asian, Latino, Arab, what have you. So this system also puts up uh, harassment through its systems. It legislates its way by staying in power. So let's talk about the, me the mental manifestations, if we will. One of the mental manifestations of racism is xenophobia. And if you don't know what that is, it's, it's an irrational fear of strangers. And so when you talk to many people who are like this, most of them, I think they've had very little exposure 
to African Americans, to uh, Middle Easterners or, or Latino, uh, Latin persons, excuse me. And that is part of it because you're able to be miseducated. Before we even get into what the manifestations are, let's find out where it comes from. There are about five or six modes of transitions by way that you can be infected by this virus and it's gone on for, for centuries. The primary way that people are infected with racism is through their parents and their grandparents. So that's mama, daddy, mima, papa. They are the primary infection because you're not born this way, but you're infected through your family. The second way that you are infected with racism is through your church. And your church is a breeding ground for white supremacy. It preaches false doctrine. It preaches superiority of the white race. And that is the second way that you are infected. The third way that you are infected is through your peer group, through your friends. Now, you may start out as a, a child who sees an African-American as an African-American, but over time, with the infection of your family, the being infected by a person whose family is racist and they have re-educated you to think like this, peers. N number four, the education system. Now, it comes from your teachers too. In fact, I can think of my children. They had to have been two and three years old. So this means that they were in preschool. And one day they told me that, Daddy, I want to be white. And I said, what? I said, no, there's no way. You're black. There's no way you could be white. And they were like, oh, really disappointed. So even at their young age, they are seeing a couple of things. One, they notice that their white teachers show the white students favoritism versus how they treat my children. The second thing is their peer group has told them that they are African-American. But it looks like we've got a call here, so we're going to jump on this. We're going to continue this discussion. All right. Welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may I help you? <laughs> Felicia? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. How you doing? How may I help you? How are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. I had a question in reference to um, conception. Mm -hmm. Um I was diagnosed with um, PCOS. Okay. And um, I recently did a test where they see if your tubes were not blocked and they were not blocked. Okay. But I'm still having issues with um, conceiving. So I was wondering, was there any um, vitamins or supplements to take to help with conception? Yeah, actually there is a prescription medication called uh, Clomid. Uh, clomiphene. Uh, do you have an OBGYN that you're seeing? Yes. Okay, ask them about Clomid for you and see if that will help you with your fertility. Okay, is there anything natural to take? You could probably try something maybe hormone modulating like either and now and this is just a wild guess uh, probably maybe ashwagandha or something like that that would balance out the hormone levels you know, mm -hmm. my guess, but I would probably go, if you want to go prescription wise, I would go with Clomid. And I can also put you in touch with a, uh, a fertility specialist uh, here in Nashville. Uh, this guy is probably top two or three fertility specialists uh, in the country. So call me okay. at the store if you have a question and we'll, uh, and I'll put you in touch with him. But Clomid, okay. uh, ask your doctor about Clomid if they think that will be a good option for you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking my call. Have a good night. Yes, ma'am. You too. All righty, bye-bye. Pharmacist, don't call me and help you. Hello. Pharmacist, don't call me and help you. Uh, yes. Um, I was wanting to comment uh, on the racism. The guy had, on television was talking about how long it's been going on and how it got started. Yes, ma'am. And, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that it's a lot of self-righteous people in the world, and it's a lot of people that just hate. And I, I don't understand why it is, but from to one Christian from another, I think that if, they, if, if I had a problem with someone's race, I'd go to God about it, because he made all of us. You know, from and I think that it's going to take God to solve the problems. The Bible says that we cannot direct our own steps. And the last few weeks, 
I can see that the Bible is being fulfilled. He's right. It's people destroying our, our city. They're not concerned about, you know, what all of us is going through right now. None of us is exempt from the coronavirus, tornadoes. You know, it's so much going on. And murder has always been going on. It doesn't make any difference if it was George uh, Floyd, which I hate that happened. I don't believe it should have happened. Uh, I think it goes back to officers being properly trained on how to handle a situation. And anger gets in the way of doing your job, then maybe that's just not the job for you because once someone loses their life, you can't go back and change it. It only takes a second uh, for someone to lose their life. And it takes years to fix it. And you still can't bring them back. Even if they are found guilty and they go to jail for 25 years or they are put to death, it's not going to bring back the one life that was taken. I don't believe that it should be a life for life, but it should be true and righteous judgment. But God said that revenge belongs to him, says the Lord. So it also tells us to be patient and wait on him. So all of that beautiful uh, riot walk that they done today, nobody lost their life. I prayed about that and I thank God for it. But it could have been like it was a few nights ago. People lose control out of anger and they do things that they regret the next day. So I'm just saying the way to make change, everyone that walked in that march that's old enough to be registered to vote need to make sure that they are registered to vote and they need to make sure they take 10 people with them. If all of those people that marched in that walk would go down to those polls and vote, then they can get some change. Walking, abusing, destroying, and killing don't make it happen. It's a way to get attention, but they need to get registered and vote. The young lady that was in charge of that riot today was fantastic, fabulous. She needs to encourage and challenge her followers, her walkers, to be registered for vote. Make sure if you're 18 and over, if you're 17 and fixing to turn 18, go ahead and register to vote and make a true change. All right, thank you, ma'am. What's going to get it done? All right, we have to take thank a break you. right now. Thank you for your call. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. Stay right there. We will be right back. Let's finish this discussion.